and uh, try to position these right on the ruler. I have linked something together wrong. Hmm. Uh, what have I linked together wrong? Let's unlink these. I've done something. This one is nine, and this one is nine, and this one is nine, right? Okay. Now this one is eight, and this one is eight. I somehow linked them together wrong. But anyway, I'm using this guide that's in Photoshop Elements 8 to um, line them up on that guide. And then I'm not going to make sure the spacing's perfect in between them because we're in a hurry. But then I can just simply um, drag that guide out of there and um, get rid of the ruler. Uh, you can also do that if you're in other versions of Photoshop Elements, um, like I had said, with the grid, and then maybe uh, line them up. There's something not working with that. Nine, nine, and nine. I don't have them locked together right. Okay. And then, ah! Okay. Why aren't they locked together right? Okay, then this one. Um, <laughs> can I cry? Okay. Control D. What am I doing here? Why is it making a selection of that? Eight. Eight and eight. Lock together for me. And then move. And then let's hope these are locked. Okay, so I can position them also by using the grid. That's my point there. And so I'm going to turn off the grid. Now, here comes um, the next part. You'll remember um, from my layout that um, I added a bunch of extra stuff. And I actually, uh, these are other scrapbooking skills. Um, you're going to have to go back to my other tutorials to learn them. But I took a ribbon and I wove it in and out. You'll recall there's a tutorial on that if you've been through course two this far. And I added um, the little leaf and flowers and tag in there. And so um, those layers um, are also included in this next step when I move forward, but I'm not going to create them here. But um, just imagine that there's extra layers here with all of that other stuff on it. And what I'm going to do is um, hold my Shift and Control key, and I'm going to select on the top one and go all the way down to the bottom one. And um, so that they're all selected, um, including any ribbon or other things that I might have on there. And then I'm going to just drag this down to the new layer icon or up depending on what version you are. Now it's very very important to not doing anything else otherwise you're going to have to select them again but you'll see these are are selected and made a copy of everything when I did that all the layers I had selected and they're still selected and so what I'm going to do is right click immediately and merge those layers and then I can go and make all these original layers invisible. Save them, because you never know, you might need to go back. And all we have is one layer now with our 3D text. And the reason for this step is um, to make the reflective text. And so I am going to press Control J to duplicate that layer, or however you like to duplicate things. I'm going to go um, to the Image drop-down menu, Rotate, and I'm going to flip the layer vertically. So I have one upside down and one regular. Now, um, because Photoshop Elements is finicky, I'm going to press Control T to bring up that. Uh, transform box just so that I can use my arrow keys and I'm going to hit the 
down arrow key until it reaches down here. Let's zoom in. And we want it to line up perfectly on top of each other. That's one, two, done. And that's just right. Hit the arrow to accept it. Check it. Yes, they are lined up. So this is the first step for our reflective text. Now there are two ways. If you lined them up right on the... <laughs> oh good, it did match. Um, on the line, they'll all, all four of the letters will, will, will touch each other. When I zoom out, it looks like this O is not, but I guess it is. Um, there are two ways now to do this reflective text. One is destructive and one is non-destructive. You can choose whichever way that you want to do it and we'll review both of them. When I did my layout here, I actually did use the destructive method because it's easier. And um, if I goof up, I've already, I always make an extra copy of the layer. So this is actually my um, bottom layer. Just going to name it real quick and control J and I'm going to make this one here invisible so we can save it in case we goof this up. We're going to use the destructive method. The destructive method of course destroys your original layer. Um, if you don't have a copy of it backed up and then uh, you're, you're um, uh, in a pickle if it doesn't work out. Uh, but this is the easiest way to do it. I'm going to choose the rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to go about halfway down on my text and make a marquee of it, of the lower half of the text. Now I'm going to right click and choose feather and um, this actually depends on how big your selection is. If you're doing this in a much smaller um, size letters, mine are nearly full page, then you're going to use uh, lower pixels. So you can um, play with this, you know, hit that undo button if you need to. But I've got 80 pixels I found works well select OK and you're going to see that it rounded these corners because this selection uh, you can't you can't really see it but it's feathered here with my layer activated I'm going to hit the delete key and then control D to deselect and you can see I immediately have reflective text and I really don't see a great need in doing it the non-destructive way because this was so easy and worked so well, but we're going to learn the non-destructive way. A little bit harder. I'm going to go back to my original layer, control J to copy it, so we got something else to play with again. And in this method, you have to use that fake mask that you learned way back in the beginning of course too. And um, I'm going to choose a, uh, I don't know which one, I played with this and got it to work. <laughs> um, I just, I guess, uh, uh, I, wait a minute, I know what I'm going to do. I had to remember how I did it to play with it. Uh, before I do that, I am going to hold down my control key and make a selection of this layer. Now this is a, uh, because we're not using Photoshop. If you're using Photoshop, you don't have to make this selection. If you're using the full version of Photoshop, this is much easier to do because they have layer masks in the full version. Um, but now I'm going to uh, go and just make a, I think it was a solid colored one I used. Did I use a solid color one? What did I use? That's right. Solid color one. We're going to move this below. 